Good day, grade eight learners. And can you believe it? This is our final lesson of EMS, where we've been focusing on economics and entrepreneurship. In the last three lessons, we've been focusing on government and the national budget. In this lesson, we'll be focusing more on standard of living. Are you ready for this lesson? Because I am. Let's go. All right, learners, who can tell me in these two pictures that we have here, which family has a high standard of living and which family has a low standard of living? Pause this video, discuss it in class, and also let the other learners and teachers know why you say so. If you're at home, pause the video and have your thoughts written down on paper. Okay, grade eight learners, thank you for the discussion. I'm sure it went great. Now to summarize, a person's standard of living or a family standard of living is directly linked to the ability to afford goods or not. Unfortunately, sometimes people live beyond their means and therefore get into a lifestyle which they cannot maintain. Now learners, I'm sure you've seen people driving the fanciest cars on the road out there. But don't let this fool you, sometimes people are buying these cars without being able to even afford it. And so an important life lesson is to only ensure that you purchase goods that you can afford and that you need. A person's lifestyle can be determined by the culture, the family attitude and their surroundings. And so it is very important to know that whoever you surround yourself with and the circles that influence you might change your perspective. So if you surround yourself with people that deem money as very important, you'll most likely become like that. So make sure you surround yourself with a good circle of friends and family. So now let's move over to self-sustained communities. The word self-sustaining means that you can take care of yourself without needing any outside help. People who live in self-sustaining communities usually learn a lot of skills or skills that have been passed down from previous generations so that they can live independently. The Khoikhoi and San tribes are examples of early self-sustaining communities. Self-sustaining can also mean that they are independent of the state or government. A unique example of this is the Amish people who live in America. They live completely independent of the government and have been doing so since the 18th century. All right, grade eight learners, as an exercise, can you think of communities that live independently of the government or the state? And more so, can you think of anyone or any community that produces resources independently of the government? All right, learners, let's move on to modern societies. Nowadays, people are less dependent on each other for survival. They are now dependent on employers and shops for food and clothing. People need to work to earn money so they can take care of themselves and their families. Modern people are therefore also much more competitive and aware of their goals, status and achievements. Years ago, the number of professions that people could practice was limited. People either became teachers or doctors, farmers or nurses, and many women did not work at all. Today, the workforce looks completely different. People have to specialize more and more in a specific profession. Social groups also look different today. People form social groups depending on their ambition, lifestyle, and interests. People can also move more easily in social circles with people who don't even live close to them due to improved communication and transport systems. We call this concept globalization. We can communicate much more easily in today's time with people all over the world. Let's move on to rural communities. Rural communities are communities found in the countryside, away from cities and large towns. Unfortunately, due to urbanization, there are fewer job opportunities in the countryside 
and the people who live there are also more at the mercy of substance farming in order to be more self-sufficient. In rural communities, people's extended families are very important to them, especially for survival. People are more attuned to each other in the rural community. Now the concept of Ubuntu comes in and is used widely in rural communities. Now who can tell me what Ubuntu means? Yes, you are right. Ubuntu means we are what we are because of the people around us. So now let's move on to the development of communities and how this may affect the community. Okay, learners, I don't know about you, but whenever I see new technology, new developments, new businesses coming up, and even new properties being built, I'm excited because this means economic growth. But now we have to take a step back and have a bigger perspective or a bigger picture because we have to look at the effects on the people and the environment. That is why South African legislature is very strict on developers. They have to ensure they have reports and impact studies before a new building is erected. When natural forest is cleared to make room for new construction, it can be devastating to thousands of native plants and animals. Or if more factories are set up, this again will cause more air pollution and so on and so forth. That is why it is important to always fully analyze the impact of new development so that we can determine what the effect of the development is. We must always try to ensure that we create a sustainable environment to leave for the generations to come. Now it's your turn again. Now I want you to pause this video, take some time to write down a few ideas or examples as to how we can keep our planet and our environment sustainable. Now, a clear example that I will start with is restaurants can use recyclable paper for their takeaway bags. What do you think? Now, moving on to unemployment. South Africa has a big challenge with high unemployment in its economy. Now, unemployment is linked to standard of living. And so if you are unemployed, you're most likely unable to maintain a high standard of living. One of the biggest reasons of unemployment in South Africa is the high level of unskilled people. Now, this is because of education. People are not equipped enough to go to the workplace and perform their jobs effectively. And so what happens is people are unable to go to jobs or join the workforce and therefore become dependent on the government. This, of course, limits economic growth. The government and businesses in South Africa have the responsibility to ensure they create job opportunities for all its citizens. But now, grade eights, we also have the responsibility to ensure we upskill ourselves. And so, including this year, you have five years of high school to ensure you do your utmost best to ensure that you have a successful career and you impact your family and community at large. Okay, grade eights, this will likely increase your chances of maintaining a high standard of living for yourself, the family and community. And on that high note, that I will conclude this lesson for today and the term one for EMS grade eight. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been splendid. I will see you in term two. Have a great day, evening and morning. Bye-bye.